Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, this is part five. We've been talking about understanding prosperity and actually godly prosperity or prospering God's way. And I thought it was important to start from the beginning back in Genesis and kind of go through to get an understanding of what the gospel is all about before we actually talked about prosperity. In the last session, we were we ended um, talking about uh, salvation and what salvation meant. Um, the word salvation in the Greek is soteria, and it, it means uh, more than one thing. It means eternal life with God, which is, which is an instantaneous thing that you receive once you're saved. It's like somebody's dying in the hospital, um, and they receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior before they die then uh, they have eternal life with God, meaning that uh, they will not have to go to hell. They will spend their eternity with God in heaven as opposed to with Satan in hell. Uh, but at the same time, they didn't have enough time to renew their minds to the things of God so that they could live a divine uh, life health-wise, to live a prosperous life financially, to have a sound mind, you know, they didn't have time for all those things. So they just received eternal life with God, which is instantaneous. So salvation is more than one thing. It is really God being God for you in every situation of your life. In other words, uh, I'm there to be whatever you need me to be when you need me to be it. That's what I'm there to do. Of course, in line with his will and his word. You know, and if you don't know what God's will and his word is, then you need to study his word and find out what his word says. Because his word is his will. For your life. Now, once we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, and we don't do it on our dying bed, then we have time to study. The scripture says, Study to show yourself approved unto God. And workmen need not be ash being ashamed, being able to rightly divide the word of truth or the Bible so that you understand it. Uh, once we receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, then we have to learn to live by a different system. I mentioned earlier that we're now living under Satan's system, his system of education, his system of health, his system of uh, politics, uh, his system of, um, of uh, food and agriculture, and all of that Satan's system. It's not God's system. Um, so when we hook up with God through his son Jesus Christ, then we need to learn how to make some changes in our life and govern our life in line with God's word, which means we need to learn how to then eat right if we don't know how to eat right. The Bible has, has scriptures and it has teaching actually on how to live, how to conduct your life, how to eat the right foods, uh, how, to, how to eat uh, in moderation. Uh, see, prior to receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior, many of us uh, lived to eat instead of eating to live. There's a difference between living to eat and eating to live. You know? Under God's system, you, uh, you eat to live because God wants you alive so that you can establish heaven on earth, which is what our assignment was in the first place. And God's never changed that assignment. It's been the same all along. Once we bring heaven completely to earth and subdue and bring everything under control in the earth realm so that it is like it is in heaven, then the second coming of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will take place. Until then, then uh, you know we have work to do, and that's what we're we're doing. Problem is, the body of Christ or the church is kind of quiet. It's, it hasn't really been uh, doing what God called it to do. The reason being is because once we receive Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we think that's it, and there's nothing more. Most of the body of Christ is not even filled with the Holy Spirit because they believe that once they receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, that there's no more. But there are plenty of scriptures talking about how we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of Truth. You should want everything God has for you. In order to be led by the Spirit of God, because God is a spirit, His kingdom is a spiritual kingdom, and we are spirits, then we need to be led by His Spirit to learn how to live the new life in the spirit because our new life in the spirit is lived from the inside out as opposed to in the natural we're living from the outside in we let influences on the outside affect us on the inside but if we're living from the strength that we have within as Christians that have been renewed by God's word then we're allowing the Holy Spirit to minister in our hearts tell us what to do 
so that we minister and we live our lives from the inside out. And when we live our lives from the inside out, then people will see Christ in us because the Spirit, Holy Spirit, will minister to our spirit so that the Spirit of God then is evident in our actions. And then when that, what happens then is we see a demonstration of God in our lives. You know, we should be laying our hands on people that should be getting healed. We should be praying for people that are sick. Uh, when we pass accidents and things on the street, we need to start praying in the Spirit so that God can get involved to bring deliverance and uh, healing and uh, restoration to that situation. So, you know, there's a lot we need to do to bring heaven to earth. Okay, now, another aspect of salvation is uh, prosperity. That's another aspect of salvation is prosperity. We need to prosper. But in order to prosper God's way, we need to learn how to then live by God's economic system. His system is not like the world system. Okay. Uh, the world system is based on um, buying and selling, uh, supply and demand. Uh, it's based on uh, investing and then receiving interest or a dividend on your investment. That's how Satan's uh, system of economics is set up. And at least in this country under our system, under the capitalistic system, um, then also we have to beware because others are prospering because they're capitalizing on us. You know, and they capitalize on your ignorance. Or they can capitalize on the fact that you may not know the laws. They can capitalize on the fact that you may not know the loopholes in the laws. But all of this is Satan's system. So in order for us to bypass all that and get blessed God's way, we have to adopt God's system. God's system is based on seed time and harvest, sowing and reaping. Okay, So let's go to um, the fourth chapter of Mark. Uh, and we're going to hit quite a few key scriptures here in uh, the fourth chapter of Mark as we talk about biblical prosperity now which is what we were talking about all along but we just had to get to this point okay so the fourth chapter of Mark I'm believing my time is going well here um, 13th verse says well actually you start at the fourth uh, the first verse of the fourth chapter Okay, he's talking about peril of the, of the sower, you know, sowing seed. Now, actually, this scripture, this uh, passage is talking about the word of God, but it also can be applied to uh, financial seeds. And I, I'll show you that as we go through, that it also applies there. 13th verse, though, I want to point that out, where it says, Know ye not this parable, then how then will ye know all parables? So what God was saying there is that if you don't understand verse 1 through 12 and what he was teaching there and most of that's in red because this is Jesus teaching in the Gospel of Mark if you don't understand that then you're not gonna understand basically anything that I come to teach you this is what he's saying that's very important scripture because know ye not this parable how then will you know all parables and he taught in parables the reason why he taught in parables a parable is a story that's comparable to a message that you want to teach, but it's based on a situation, a circumstance, or an economy that the people are understand. And then he uses that as a basis uh, to relate uh, a truth in a parallel situation. So this is what a parable is. So he was saying here that you need to understand this parable. Now we're going to start at verse uh, 1 and we're going to read through so that you can kind of get an understanding here of what he was saying and we're going to see how this applies both to the Word of God and it also applies to financially. Now there are a lot of other scriptures and I'm going to give you a list of scriptures um, probably in our next session I'll give you a list of scriptures dealing with uh, giving so that we understand giving but the first thing we as Christians need to do is tithe. Now most Christians know what tithing is but most Christians do not tithe. For those of you who don't know what tithing is, that's to give a tenth of whatever increase comes into your household or into your person. You know, and as far as money, since we're talking about money, that means a tenth of your income would go to the Lord. 
So when, when I receive my check or my wife receives her check, then we only budget or think about 90% of it because the 10% we've already made up in our mind that goes to God. So we don't even consider that as being a part of the check. So that's how we're able to do it with no problem. And we've been doing it for years. But tithing is something you need to do because it will open the windows of heaven so you can then be poured out a blessing. And we'll go over those scriptures in our next session. Um, so right now I want to thank you for tuning in again uh, to this uh, segment. And uh, we will go on at least a few more segments before uh, we conclude so you can get an idea of uh, godly prosperity and why the body of Christ is not prospering as it should. Okay, thank you again. And goodbye for now.